Selamat datang ke ASM Podcast yang dibawakan khas oleh Akademi Sains Malaysia. Siri podcast ini merupakan platform perkongsian topik-topik berkaitan sains, teknologi, inovasi dan ekonomi STIE secara santai dan mudah difahami. Setiap episod akan menampilkan jaringan pakar ASM yang akan berkongsi pengalaman dan pendapat mereka tentang STIE seiring dengan ethos ASM. Budayakan sains, raikan teknologi, cetuskan inovasi. Good morning everyone and welcome to ASM Podcast. I'm Mazlan Othman and I'm happy to be your host of the very first episode of the ASEAN Foresight edition of this series of podcasts. Now the ASEAN Foresight Alliance or AFA as we call it was established in 2019 with the objective of building networks between ASEAN and global foresight activities and initiatives. Through AFA, ASM is developing the ASEAN Science, Technology and Innovation Ecosystem Foresight 2035. In this report, we will look at global mega trends and examine how these will impact science, technology and innovation in ASEAN. So the idea is that ASEAN should collaborate to manage these future trends together for the betterment of the whole ASEAN community. In relation to this, the Academy of Sciences Malaysia is carrying out a series of podcasts and webinars to explore the issues related to setting up this STI ecosystem. As a bit of background, in 1997, the second ASEAN Informal Summit in Kuala Lumpur adopted the ASEAN Vision 2020, which sounds very much like Malaysian Vision 2020. This endorsed the vision of a technologically competitive ASEAN, competent in strategic and enabling technologies with an adequate pool of technologically qualified and trained human resource and strong networks of scientific and technological institutions and centers of excellence. So one of the parameters is the economic context. And for this reason, our guest of honor is Tan Sri Muni, a prominent figure in the Malaysian corporate world and an advocate for deeper ASEAN economic integration. Tan Sri Muni was previously the chairman of the ASEAN Business Advisory Council Malaysia from the year 2014 to 2023. This year, Tansri, your term is ending. Currently, Tansri Muni is the chairman of Chari ASEAN Research and Advocacy. So one of Chari ASEAN's influential publications is the ASEAN Economic Community Blueprint 2025 Analysis, which looks at the entirety of integration between the economies of ASEAN to create a more dynamic and resilient economic community. And so before we start, Tansri, can you tell us a little bit about your work with Chari? Well, I mean, Chari actually uh, is uh, looking at, uh, mainly we look at the economic integration issues mm. uh, that inhibit, you know, uh, a greater, closer, and cl uh, closer inte economic integration uh, within ASEAN. Uh, we also look at the wider uh, structural, even geopolitical framework, if you mm. like. We call it the geoeconomics, you know, the, 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 the developing geoeconomics. But that, that's the wider context. But in a in more detailed uh, uh, context, we look particularly at economic uh, integration. I think uh, Chari actually was the knowledge partner for the publication in 2021 of what we call Pathway 225, which was part of the document for the ASEAN Business Advisory Council. And uh, Chari worked very hard uh, with uh, ASEAN Business Advisory Council to come up with 225 proposals uh, to address uh, the issues uh, of uh, the pandemic. Mm. Uh, but anyway, we, we, we are, you know, it's not just Chari ASEAN research and advocacy. So we push 
and we work together with ASEAN Business Advisory Council uh, to get to, to get the needle through. Uh, there are many issues. Needle, literally and figuratively. Mm -hmm. We said to get the needle through, figuratively and literally. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yes, literally. And and uh, I think the the kinds of issues, uh, country that you uh, bother you, are issues that have bothered uh, <clears throat> ASEAN businesses. Mm. Uh, from their viewpoint, mm -hmm. uh, these are how much cooperation is there within ASEAN, despite commitments, mm -hmm. you know, to, to cooperate. Uh, how much real trade is there among ASEAN countries, uh, despite we saying there's a single market there's a, and a single production base, right? Uh, a sort of innovative uh, market. Uh, that uh, sort of encourages uh, investments, trade, all sorts of activities mm. between ASEAN countries uh, and uh, free trade, non-tariff barriers and tariffs to be removed. How true is this? How much has happened on the ground? Uh, Chari, for example, you know, we have uh, in shown how non-tariff barriers have been increasing even as tariff barriers come down. Mm. So non-tariff barriers are, you know, a bane the world over, a bane the world over. It's not just an ASEAN mm. disease, but, you know, ASEAN is supposed to be working towards greater integration and, and, the, and the removal of such barriers, so there be greater trade. And, uh, within. At the moment, trade within ASEAN, it's only 25%. You know, of total, you know, ASEAN trade. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so Tasri, let's get to the nitty gritty of the science, uh, technology, and innovation. And because we are trying to uh, see what sort of STI ecosystem we can set up for ASEAN, one of the things that has been the bane of um, the research community and the whole of the scientific um, enterprise as a whole is R&D produced by uh, universities, research institutions, institutions are not being uh, taken up by industry. Why is that? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> as you know, Tantri, this is, this is a universal problem, mm. right? Uh, and it's particularly uh, uh, a major problem uh, in countries like Malaysia. The linkage between industry and, and, and research, mm. uh, the universities, the scientists and so on, is poor. Mm. I am chairman also of the Institute for Capital Market Research. So I badger them. We come up with some really good research, mm. both on the supply and demand side mm. of the market, to protect the investors and so on and so forth. They look at what happened with the EPF money uh, that people got, some use the money to invest. The young fellows use money to invest. You know, a lot of online investments, yes, you know. Yeah. Uh, and some, they do not know enough about these things. They could lose some money, you know. So then we've got to look at the online investment platforms uh, to make sure that there is, you know, disclosure, mm. full disclosure and understanding. But many of the Malay boys and girls, you know, who have money get attra attracted to hmm, uh, these, these, these platforms. Uh, they think they can make quick money and okay. so on, uh, do, do not know enough. I meant much of the disclosure standards are fulfilled, but maybe in English, maybe they don't understand enough English. There's so many facts uh, like that. But coming coming to the thing about research, so I tell ICMR, we must link up okay. with the universities. Mm. Oh, so we have a linkage now. Mm. Mm. Let's call for papers. Mm, mm, so we have mm. a, a call for papers, uh, so they, they come and we, we relate it to, to industry mm, mm. and we are close to SC. Mm. So in terms of the, of the, of the, of the, of the supply side, huh? uh, you know, making sure standards mm, are fulfilled mm, and so on mm. and so forth, we give our research work to the SC. So you're talking about this, this, this nexus, huh? mm, this ecosystem. Mm, mm. You must engage relevant parties mm who are uh, critical to the uh, certain markets mm, uh, mm. Uh, to make sure that we're all working together. Your yes, research is used, yes, yes. you know, in terms of coming up with new regulations. Your, you know, mm. and your research is understood 
in terms of the uh, of the demand side, mm. you know, mm. uh, and so there must be this nexus. The problem is that I think universities and the scientists are also sometimes a little reticent mm. you know, to mm. push forward. Yes, that's true. But Tansri, isn't it also true that the very nature of the companies that operate in Malaysia, whether they're Malaysian owned or internationally owned, they are not. I mean, they are just purely manufacturing and they're not doing any innovation, let alone research. And perhaps one way is to change the nature of those companies, or those, you know, even if they are international companies. How can we do that, you think? You know, Tansri, many of these companies, especially the technology companies, mm. you know, the technology companies, they, <coughs> they're doing their own research. Oh, on uh, artificial intelligence. Yes, yes. Well, artificial intelligence is largely an enabler. Okay, it's mm, largely mm, and mm, an enabler, mm, mm. and they then go around, you know, to find out how this enablement, this enablement, uh, can be used uh, to make their companies more efficient, mm. uh, more cost effective, and so on and so forth. Sure. And you mm. know, you have uh, Amazon, you know, c cutting down staff. You have IBM, uh, for example, doing away with the human resource department. AI, mm. you know, using mm. AI mm. Uh, mm. capabilities. I mean, I'm on the board of a company called Silverlake Access Limited, which is the largest technology company in Southeast Asia. What does it do? And they have a good uh, link uh, with the Tunku Abdul Rahman uh, uh, mm, College. Mm, mm. Uh, but uh, the chairman and owner mm, is himself a mathematician. Okay. Mm. And you know, they, 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 they know systems. Mm? Uh, and they developed it further mm, mm, in house, you know. Mm, uh, mm. So, so in a sense, because of this, there's not enough extensive linkage. But I think you know there are areas in which uh, people are struggling, mm. you know, in which scientists uh, and and technologists can contribute. Yes. And I would say climate change issues is one mm -hmm. big area. To mm, me, the two mm. big issues facing mm. the world today are climate change. And artificial intelligence. Yeah. Uh, no, okay, people talk about America, China, the Google and all oh. that sort of stuff, but yeah. that sort of things that affect our lives mm. most. Yeah. And people are struggling, companies are struggling about how they can uh, be uh, sustainable sus sustainable companies. They don't know, you know, how to do it. They think it's going to cost money mm. to do it. Uh, they think, you know, for example, you take energy being the, the industry which probably upon which there's the most focus uh, in terms of carbon emission and how it could be reduced. And uh, they are thinking of the transition costs from present transitions, present production uh, methods and going into, you know, I think scientists can go in mm. and come and say how they, it should be done. But I think scientists should be less reticent and, and, and should not be afraid uh, and not to be too academic and not be afraid. I mean, you look at in Cambridge, mm. you know, the Cambridge Science mm. Centre, there's a lot yes, of yeah. interaction. Uh, so that can yeah. happen. So I see that uh, there's uh, two parts, uh, two reasons for that. One is the um, promotion exercise for this same academics, you know, where the focus is on uh, writing papers, publishing. So as long as you're publishing in Nature or something like that, you get the, the most points. You're not going to get the most points by uh, publishing in some uh, trade and industry uh, journal or something like that. Mm -hmm. So there's that one problem. The other problem is while the government says a lot about um, wanting to make sure R&D um, provide the inputs to industry, they don't provide the funding for that. You know, so going from D, uh, I mean R to D to commercialization, it could be one billion dollars. You're talking about drugs and all that, but nobody's investing in this, and nobody's paying. Uh, so there's that uh, to me, the funding chasm that must be. Uh, I would overcome. say, I would say you <coughs> try and get private funding mm. 
from companies mm. who need your 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 research mm. and development. Mm. And so, you know, uh, there are companies which are struggling, as I say, sure. and mm. there are companies which are developing, you know, new technologies, and there are countries which are doing it. So we talk about ASEAN, okay, good, mm. you know, but when we talk about technology, you know, ASEAN is not technology rich. No. Mm. Mm. Of course, we, we, we are not dumbbells, but yeah. uh, we are not technology rich. But in terms of the areas of artificial intelligence and the area of particularly of climate change, the countries which are very technology rich and relevant, you know, would be the northern European countries, you know, such as Norway, Sweden, mm. uh, and, and, and of course China has got, uh, you know, its, its own uh, strengths as well. I am particularly attracted to Sweden, Norway, Finland. Mm. Uh, you know, these are countries with companies mm. uh, which have moved, you know, with the new world. Mm best, I think, you know, in a clean fashion and who uh, also reorganize their societies mm, mm, uh, to, mm. uh, for example, they don't use motor cars. I mean, they're, they're ministers and so on, travel with public transport, yes. you know, yeah. and, and, and so, so these, these are countries that, that intrigue me and I have, you know, you have companies like Volvo, you have companies like Ericsson, uh, you know, you, have, uh, you know, the Seneca, I mean, these guys, we should learn and so science, when we talk about science, uh, technology, and innovation, one thing we miss is entrepreneurship. Yeah. They mm -hmm. could be more entrepreneurial mm -hmm. scientists, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and therefore you engage, you know, companies directly. Yes. And 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 mm. then, and then you know, get private funding for the work that you're doing. You know, I've seen this happen in a small scale in Malaysia. Uh, during the uh, uh, COVID uh, period, post-COVID, there were some young Malay boys, you know, wanting, uh, you know, to develop uh, tracing uh, a technology. You can trace someone to spit into to saliva. Oh, hmm? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I've seen them talk to... Uh, a Malaysian company? Malaysian, you know, group? Malaysian oh. scientists, okay. Malaysian okay. boys, okay. young, right. you know, right. talking to some rich entrepreneur, mm. you know, rich uh, fellow, uh, who was interested, mm. engaged them. Mm. Uh, and the problem was they got to go through so many stages. Oh, right? gosh, yeah. <laughs> yeah go through they, the loops, uh, hoops. Yeah, what grants they can get, and so many stages. Mm. And so uh, I don't think much has happened okay. in that regard. Mm. Prime example okay. of what, what you said <laughs> about, about, but they did engage. Yeah. They did engage, mm. you know. This is a husband and wife, mm. uh, you know, a team. So, so you, I think you've got to be entrepreneurial. They found an mm. hmm, uh, who who can speak mm. the lingo for for the you know this rich uh, business yeah. uh, fellows, mm. mm. engage them, put them together. So you have to macam orang bagi. You know, you have to have be a matchmaker, lah. Yeah. You know, the yeah. matchmaker. So, so on the one hand, we want to uh, encourage entrepreneurship and science entrepreneurship. Although I would say quite difficult is something okay, we should continue uh, to to advocate for. But uh, nowadays, there's always um, we like to go with the big boys. Like we've been trying to do Elon Musk, for instance. So what value would Elon Musk uh, bring to our science and technology um, STI in this country, you think? Well, I think it depends. You have to pick and choose. Yes. Elon Musk and Starlink. Yes, he's got uh, terrorist some, Starlink. Some people have he's got various views, yeah? he's various got views about, about, about Starlink. Yeah. But sometimes we under, under, underestimate people who are closer. Mm. Uh, Ambani mm. Mm, in mm. India. Yeah. Uh, to, to uh, you know, in our, in our neck of the woods, yes, you know. Yeah. Uh, and Indonesia has got a very strong ecosystem. I mean, they, they have had uh, how many unicorns? Huh? Mm? Uh, and, you mm. know, they, they, we, we have not had a unicorn, no, you know, we at all. Mm. You know, in we Malaysia. lost Grab, mm. we lost a fish. Yeah. But, you know, Indonesia is, 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 is dynamic, mm. uh, is, is doing so. And, but you see, who are the guys behind the Minister for Education was behind Gojek. Mm, mm, so mm. he can now bring to the education system, you know, kind of approach that he introduced in introducing Gojek, make it, making it a, 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 you know, big, so it helps. Mm, mm. And you have the Minister of Tourism, uh, 
Santiago. Oh no, you know, for a businessman hmm, who's now in government, mm. uh, finding mm. ways and means to make, you know, uh, how methods, methodologies for business and so on apply in government, particularly the Gojek, mm. you know, mm. guy. So I think it helps if. Uh, scientists, mm -hmm. entrepreneurs who use science mm -hmm. and technology also in government mm -hmm. and then you know they can see you know what kind of uh, requirements must be fulfilled mm -hmm. by government mm -hmm. policy uh, to give rise to the kind of company that they gave rise to like yes, Gojek. Yeah, you know? uh, Tansri, let's go to this um, issue of intellectual property rights. Uh -huh. I, even you know when we were discussing mm -hmm. uh, when in negotiating all the trade deals, I know that one of the big um, blocks was the issue of intellectual property rights. So how is this important to to industry? You know, because we know that industry has uh, proprietary information and all that. So is that uh, would that be something very important to look at? Uh, I find country. I find. Uh uh, IP uh, programs uh, mm. in ASEAN mm. uh, quite limited, mm -hmm. uh, quite limited, and this uh, obviously is a disincentive for a company whose whose whose. If you look at their balance sheet, uh, balance sheet sheet of a company, it's not just a finance. You know, it's just a good goodwill, the intellectual property valuations. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that they have, and if this is going to be stolen and taken away, yes. you mentioned proprietary mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Then I am I am a little bit careful before mm -hmm. I, I put the thing down. I think ASEAN has got to up its game hmm? okay. on, on having common standards of intellectual property rights so as to engage. Investment. Mm, mm. Uh, investment is not just money now, it's yes. uh, thinking, uh, people. Yes. Mm? Yeah. And, 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 and as, as you say, you know, sort of science, yeah. technology that people bring. So ASEAN has got to be stronger uh, if it wants to be this, this single market, you know, mm, mm, this mm, base. Mm. We talked about human resource several times, you know, and um, it would be fair to say that in any particular field, in ASEAN, in one of the ASEAN countries, there is no, sometimes not even the critical mass um, in terms of human resource for developing okay. those uh, certain issues, or certain uh, skills or mm. certain fields. Mm. Um, how do how do you see this? Uh, and I thought, for me, it's about human mobility. You know, we make it so difficult for people to come to work in Malaysia. Uh, or, or in any country in ASEAN, how can we change that mm. so that there's this mobility? Well, bit, within ASEAN, uh, they have been working for years and years on what they call the MRAs, you know, uh, uh, mutual recognition arrangements, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, for 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 various professionals, and then this covers architects, you know, uh, surveyors. Mm -hmm. Uh, doctors, accountants, mm. uh, lawyers. The biggest problems are with lawyers and, 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 and doctors, right? Uh, that every country is protecting. Yes, you know, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Even the medical devices, uh, uh, there's a medical devices directive. Mm. Hmm? Uh, and I brought this up during the uh, pandemic, you know. Everyone signed, yes. ASEAN. Um, hmm? free movement of medical yes. devices. Mm. Mm. But only Indonesia, Malaysia and, and Singapore actually adhered to it. Mm. And it is important, you know, in emergencies, yes. right. you know, that right. these things. Yes. Right. So right. Again, you know, ASEAN got the ATIGA, ASEAN Trade in Goods uh, Agreement. Mm. They've re revised it recently. Mm. It's an agreement. Mm. But when people don't follow, there's nothing mm. that you do about the, the, it. No there's no point having an agreement, mm. you know. So it is. It is important uh, that people follow through with what uh, ASEAN, uh, you know, what ASEAN says is going mm. to do. That it mm. is followed through. And the problem with ASEAN, you know, is softly, softly approach. You know, uh, and this makes coming back to your point, you know, about technology mm. uh, and sh intellectual property. You say, huh? The guys may not uh, actually follow the rules mm. or mm. the laws. And then there'll be an inhibition, you know, to 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 come in. I think uh, scientists, you have intellectual property rights. Mm, sure. 
and uh, <coughs> you should be protective of them, mm. even as you engage a mm. company or sell an idea to the government even, mm -hmm. they're yours, you know. Mm. And, and you should be, you know, mindful. And if you cross uh, ASEAN borders, you want that to be to be true too, yes. to be well protected. Yeah. So movement of ideas, movement of people, must have laws which are clear in terms of mm. protecting, the, you know, the right. Of <coughs> movement of people, What's the point of, 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 of uh, having access doctors in, 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 in Malaysia, Malaysia. Or, in, mm. if they cannot be used in other ASEAN countries? Mm. You know, it, it, it is tak makan di akal, you know, for, 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 for orang kata bodoh sombong, <laughs> you know. And uh, so it is, you know, certain things uh, ASEAN countries are so short-sighted about. Yes. You know, in terms of you're talking freedom, uh, you know, free movement. Of movement now, in terms yes. of qualifications, yeah. recognition, right. I suppose, right. to be an arrangement yes. in place right. for mutual right. recognition yes. Yes. of certain qualifications. It's not moving enough. No. So, you know, I think <coughs> ASEAN uh, leaders uh, should take the handles. Yeah. Okay, okay, we yeah. want to look at science, technology, mm. innovation. Mm. Uh, and, and look into the real issues mm. that, are, that are plaguing, yes. you know, and and then say, okay, let's 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 do this. What happens now is they have lots of big studies, you know? big blueprints, <laughs> right? Lots of committees yeah. and yeah. working groups mm. at the when when the ASEAN Economic uh, Community Blueprint uh, was reviewed in twenty twenty one. They say, oh, 70% have been achieved just because there was a declaration that they would <laughs> Okay? Yeah? Yeah. And I then the, the interesting yeah. thing is, you know, they, they haven't, uh, and then they said there are 1,000, I remember seeing that figure, 1,700 uh, uh, sort of activities taking place yeah. to implement. So that is an achievement. Yes. You know? Yeah. So this is the point is you We're know, not talking about outcomes. It's not the reality. Yeah. So this yeah. is a uh, audit. There should be an mm. audit take mm. of where we are in the areas particularly that you're interested mm. in. You mm. know? There should be an audit take. Mm. And I don't think it's ha taken place. We'd be row actually at ASEAN Business Advisory Council with the ASEAN Secretariat. Hmm? Whose audit take is, you know, look, we came up with this declaration. This, yeah. <laughs> Everyone agreed, you know. <laughs> yeah, we adopted a resolution. Uh, That's the other way yeah, they say. Yeah. Yeah. So that is a problem. And mm. then, you know, the MRA is frustrating. I meet a lot of our uh, architects, mm. our lawyers, mm. not so much lawyers, like accountants, you know. Uh, and then when it comes to, to, to them working in another country, it still comes up, double yeah. taxation. Yes, yeah. yeah. Yes. So it's, it's one whole bundle that mm. cuts across. Mm. Mm. And mm. so you, when you approach it sectorally alone, it won't work. I, I, I believe, for example, in ASEAN, what I call a demonstration effect. Yes. Okay. Dia tak mau buat, okay, tak apa. Kita tiga, kita buat. Yes. Mm. And when we, the three of us, ah. do it, and this guy sees the benefit. Yeah, they see success. Then he wants to come in. Mm. You know, so do what you can. They call it the ASEAN minus X mm. approach. Mm. Okay, and that should be more of that. Yes. You know, yeah. uh, to make, for example, in terms of of of, of uh, de-dollarization mm. and the use of currencies. Okay, they are doing it. So before long, they want to do it on on, on a regional level. Mm. But then you know. Let's face facts, you know. Do oh, you want to hold Laotian money or not? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so there are the facts of the reality yes, also. Yes, <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So you have this, uh, I'm intrigued, you have this mutual recognition association, is it? The MRA? MRA. So something. The mutual. This will be at the recognition arrangement. Arrangement. This is for the professionals, right? Yes. Yeah. They, they are, it is happening, yeah, but not fast enough. Yes. And then double taxation is a problem, mm. you know, to mm. make happen. Immigration is a problem, so you can identify the problems. Mm. There's a tax problem, MOF issue. Yes. I mean, you know, immigration. Okay, let's look mm. at home affairs. You mm. know, but do it in one one singular yes. whole. Yeah. You know? Right. Instead of this guy, there are lots of meetings. These yeah. guys go to meetings. There are, you know, ASEAN regional organizations mm, involving mm, professionals mm, of various mm, types. Mm. And they 
not getting anywhere, you know, going round in circles. Addressing the problem in silos. Mm, so, silos. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But something I, we, we, we have There's a lot of do. talent in, in ASEAN. It's a young population. And if we can, you know, develop educational structure, mm. educational systems that are region-wide and mm. regionally uh, yes. recognized, it would be fantastic. I mean, okay, NUS, number eight in the world now, you know, uh, can they not do something hmm, to export the kind of things that they do that brought them up to number eight to other countries? Can we have some pl common platform of standards? you know, to bring up the level of academic mm. Mm. Uh, and practical qualifications yes. that is necessary. Right. So many countries, Singapore particularly, can contribute more to ASEAN on the intellectual property, mm. on, 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 on the you yes. know, mind yeah. contribution right. uh, and make ASEAN better. Mm. And, and, and then have all the young chaps, you know, so, you know, we, 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 we are 660 million people. Mm, mm. We are largely young. We are 3.2 trillion, you know, economy. Yes. Growing 5%. Growing fast, yeah. Now, how do we sustain and mm, perform better? Mm, mm. You know, and education, science, technology, innovation, entrepreneurship. Yes. Those are the ones that we want right, to do. Yeah. Although we must not forget rights, huh? workers' rights as well. <laughs> yes, huh? yeah. Sometimes you have to loop her, yeah, yes, you know. Yeah. There's so much going for ASEAN, uh, but it's suboptimal mm, the way it's mm, moving mm, forward. Mm. And I noticed in the SNT uh, sector within ASEAN, there's so many committees, so many frameworks. Mm. I'm not sure they all are working or not. So I think we should, well, maybe this is one of the things ASM will have to propose that we, we go back to all these uh, things that we, um, we proposed, the ASEAN funding for research, the, uh, there are a few things. Mm -hmm. uh, review them, uh, have a frank uh, analysis of the actual impacts uh, and outcomes. So, so there, there are uh, uh, some things, uh, so many things more we can say here at Tan Sri, but I, would like to know from you, I mean, last few minutes, will chat GPT replace you and me? <laughs> Ooh, uh, I was just reading a book, actually, mm. uh, written by three people. Mm -hmm. Henry Kissinger. Oh, yeah? Oh, okay. Uh, 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 science historian and someone who was in, uh, in industry, you know, technology. Uh, and uh, of course, they come to the conclusion that uh, we must not come to a situation where a human dimension yes. is lost. Yeah. What are the human dimensions they talk about? Emotion, mm. feeling, yeah. sympathy. Yeah. But sometimes I wonder, because of all the wrong things people are doing in the world, so what are we talking about? Sympathy, emotion, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. We're doing all the We're wrong things anywhere. in the world. Maybe give it to the, to, 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 <laughs> to the, uh, to the robot to do it, <laughs> because they might make a better job mm, of climate change mm, issues mm, than, mm, than we are, mm. because we have all sorts of yes. you know, screwed up ideas mm, that we bring mm. to the table. Yes, yeah. So sometimes it's not a bad thing you know, to, 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 to neutralize, scientifize, uh, you know, uh, decision making. Yes. Uh, without the intrusion of human nonsense. <laughs> I, I think we cannot uh, reject the fact that ChatGPT is here and all, every kind of version, you know, BART and all that. But it's how to make use of them without, uh, you know, uh, what is that word? Uh, uh, the, the, um, ruining uh, ourselves. Mm. And um, to me, it's still not, it's, everything is not lost because they've, Chat GPT has gone this far because of the training that we have done and we train them. Eh? So why can't we train them values um, and ethics? Is that, in, I mean, we learn ethics and values, right? So if we in our younger age can learn ethics and values, 
the same way, I think, um, why not? I mean, I, of course, I'm not the one. Uh, yeah. Have you chat GPT? I mean, I'm reminded of this uh, judge in Colombia or somewhere, mm. you know, uh, who admitted uh, that he gave all the facts and so on, you mm. know, uh, and, yes, and then and, and? there was a judgment. Yes. A finding of guilt. Hanging, I think, a hanging case. Oh, my goodness. He yeah. used what came up from chat GPT. And then? So I think uh, he admitted it. He, he didn't write his judgment. The judgment came from, from, from uh, you know, uh, chat GPT. And he adopted it. Well, but I think there are certain things we should not ask. <laughs> I think that's, that's the thing, you know. Yeah. There are certain things uh, we should ask. Should I, uh, let's say, you know, I love this woman who is not my wife. Mm. <laughs> should, should I, I continue affair? an affair you with know? her? The, then the, and she is this age, that age, she's <laughs> rich. Well, you, have to, you, know, you, you put that all in, the guy said, I would leave your wife. <laughs> you <know? laughs> because you know, on the facts, the object, objective yeah, yeah, facts. Very you know? objective, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very dangerous. <laughs> but yeah, I mean the fact that... Um, I mean, we have, we're having a chat like this, yeah. Eh? Yeah, um, yeah, anybody could go to chat GPT and, and try and get the same responses by, you know, prompting, you know, that. And uh, soon they don't need Mune Majid or they don't need Mazlan Osman, right? <laughs> no, that's the world has changed so much. Country, you know, mm. in our life, you know, we've seen it all happen, it's good. We now worry, you know, like my daughter tells me, uh, her generation, she's about 30, almost 40. Mm. Her, her generation is in the transition stage. Mm. We are past it. Yeah. Yeah? But then she's generation to come will use whatever is useful for them, mm. for themselves. Mm. You know, uh, They're not stuck. They're not fixated, say, in terms of whether, you know, Britain is the mecca of the world. Huh? Mm. Mm. You know, okay. I, you know mm. we were mm. fixated. You know? Yes. Uh, Anglo-Saxon this, Anglo-Saxon that, and these guys are going to be very, very objective and cold. Cold. You know, okay. In yeah. the mm. Okay. Mm. Okay. So I think I'd like to thank you very oh, much, Dan Sri, for this nice very, very <laughs> interesting conversation. Um, and we hope that you know um, what we're going to propose in this uh, foresight would, of course, take into account all of these things, and particularly uh, the industry, how we factor industry into this STI ecosystem. Okay. That's our biggest uh, gap uh, at the moment. Okay, Tansri. Well, thank you for having thank me. You thank, so you. Okay, thank you so much for coming here. Okay, bye-bye.